I love my body too. Every Tuesday night. And I think of you. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. We post videos daily, so if you don't want to miss an upload, smash the thumbs up button if your favorite movie was on this list, join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on, but also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutout, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Ranging from flubbed lines and ruined takes to botched stunts and simple moments of craziness, bloopers remind us that actors are human too and portray them in different light. And sometimes, watching deleted scenes with mistakes made by members of the cast is more entertaining than watching the actual movie, even though it takes some of the magic away. More often than not, these clips don't make it to the final cut and are transferred to the gag reel, but sometimes they are so good that they end up in the movie. Either way, funny outtakes are even more amusing when they come from serious movie scenes, so stay tuned as we look into eight of them. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 certainly has its fair share of funny moments, but it also had quite a lot of serious scenes. When James Gunn, the writer and director of the movie, posted a blooper video, it turned out that the blooper could not have happened during a more serious scene. In the movie, Yondu, played by Michael Rooker, sacrifices himself for Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord because he cared about him despite their complex relationship and the fact that they were constantly at each other's throats. Interestingly, Gunn initially didn't want to win the film with Yondu dying, but knew it had to happen because it was a story about a father's love for his son, and that's what Yondu is to Quill. Now, the emotional scene where Quill, Gamora, Drax, Rocket and Groot commemorate Yondu required Rooker to lay down without moving a muscle for quite a while, which can be quite demanding and requires a lot of focus. Moreover, as evidenced by the blooper video, if the actor is tired from all the shooting, it also requires a lot of concentration not to doze off, something that Rooker didn't have as he started snoring in the middle of Quill's heartfelt speech. Interestingly, the cast and crew didn't burst in laughter when Rooker's snoring started piercing everyone's eardrums. And Chris Pratt simply continued on with his speech as if nothing had happened, probably in order not to ruin the moment. Coming up in this pick we have a blooper so good and hilarious that it ended up in the final cut of the movie. When Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope was released back in 1977, it became an unlikely hit that would eventually turn out to be the starting point of a global phenomenon in one of the biggest franchises out there. In the movie, Chewbacca, Luke and Han end up on the Death Star, and at one point they follow Princess Leia down the grate that leads to what turns out to be a garbage compactor. The Imperials realize where they are and activate the compactor, and its walls begin closing in. Right after Luke calls C-3PO asking for the compactor to be shut down, there is a shot of a blast shield door opening and stormtroopers passing through. As they march, the stormtrooper on the right bumps his head against the door, which was completely unplanned. Take over. See to him. Looking back at the happy accident, the actor who played the stormtrooper said, On the second day of filming, I developed an upset stomach. By mid-morning, I had paid three to four visits to the bathroom. Having redressed myself and returned to the set, I felt the need to rush back to the toilets, but I was placed in the shot. On about the fourth take, as I shuffled along, I felt my stomach crumbling and bang, I hit my head. As I wasn't moving too fast, it was more of a scuffed bash, so it didn't hurt, but as no one shouted cut, I thought the shot wasn't wide enough for me to be in the frame. Released in 2015, The Martian followed the astronaut Mark Watney, played by Matt Damon, as he gets stranded on Mars during a manned mission after a strong dust storm hits and forces him and his crew to abort their mission. During the evacuation, Watney gets left behind by his team, who assume him dead, and he has nobody to rely on but himself to survive with only meager supplies. Rotten Tomatoes surveyed 346 critics and concluded that 91% of the reviews were positive, with an average rating of 7.8 out of 10, and the movie was praised for pretty much everything, mainly because of Damon who won Golden Globe Awards for Best Actor and was also nominated for Academy Award for Best Actor, the BAFTA Award for Best Actor in the Leading Role, and the Critics' Choice Award for Best Actor. 
In the movie, Watney wakes up after the storm, all alone on the red planet, and returns to his crew's surface habitat, immediately focusing on food. He makes an improvised farm, using Martian soil and fertilizers, water produced by extracting hydrogen from the rocket fuel, and potatoes. The bloopers gag reel revealed that in the scene where Watney makes a calendar, Matt Damon mixed up the numbers and started writing 184 right after 182. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> let's clean that up, let's go again, please. Sorry, guys. Released in 2016 to mixed reviews, X-Men Apocalypse was set in 1983 and dealt with Ansabanur, an ancient Egyptian mutant also known as Apocalypse, as he tried to take over the world after waking up from slumber that lasted for ages. James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender reprised their roles from X-Men, Days of the Future Past as younger versions of Charles Xavier, aka Professor Rex, and Magneto, and it doesn't surprise that the funniest moment from the entire blooper reel was delivered by two of them. As the movie draws to an end, Xavier and Eric reaffirm their friendship, though Eric once again leaves. As he does so, Xavier bids him farewell, while Eric wishes Professor good luck. On the blooper reel, however, when Eric exits the scene, he mutters, I love your body. To which McAvoy, with a serious look on his face, replies, I love my body too. Every Tuesday night. And I think of you. Directed by Joe Micolette Serra and released in 2005, a horror movie titled House of Wax was a loose remake of the movie of the same name released in 1953, which in turn was a remake of the 1933 movie Mystery of the Wax Museum. Even though the movie was a financial success, earning $70 million worldwide, it was met with mostly negative reviews with an average rating of 4.3 out of 10 and an approval rating of 25% based on 151 reviews in Rotten Tomatoes. Moreover, Paris Hilton won the Golden Raspberry Award for the Worst Supporting Actress, while the movie itself was nominated for the Worst Picture and Worst Remake of Sequel. Following a group of teens as they get stranded near a peculiar wax museum and eventually have to fight in order not to become a part of the next exhibit, the movie was full of cliches and usual horror tropes. And funnily, one of the critics said that the movie had a great sense of humor about itself. As the bloopers revealed, equally funny and annoying at the same time was a car alarm that suddenly went off and ruined what should have been an intense and thrilling sequence in the forest. Written and directed by Quentin Tarantino and starring Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, as well as Leonardo DiCaprio, Django Unchained followed the title character, a freed slave, on his quest to save his wife from a Mississippi plantation owner. Now, while there's definitely more than enough fake blood in Tarantino's movies to go around, it's funny how great actors act like nothing has happened when real blood suddenly starts flowing. In the movie, Django and Dr. Schultz go to the cotton plantation for dinner with Calvin Candy, played by DiCaprio with plans of rescuing Django's wife. However, during the intense scene, Calvin Candy sees through their intentions and angrily hits the table and breaks a glass in the process. With a bloody hand, he starts pointing his finger around, and while you would have thought that the injury was scripted, it wasn't actually planned. While other actors were obviously taken aback by what happened, DiCaprio simply kept on going, not letting glass shards stuck in his hand get in his way. Ultimately, the blooper ended up in the final cut of the movie, and DiCaprio proved that he knows how to deliver a truly memorable performance, even when he plays a supporting role. In what turned out to be the weakest and most criticized entry in the Star Wars franchise, Episode 1 The Phantom Menace, Jar Jar Lee's Queen Amidala and Jedi Ambassadors, Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi to meet the Gun Gun leader Boss Nass at a sacred Gun Gun area to convince him to help the people of Naboo, form an alliance and unite in battle. However, during an important and serious scene, there was a rather funny blooper that eventually surfaced. While Boss Nass was holding a speech in his native language, Kenny Baker, in the costume of R2-D2, obviously couldn't see where he was going, so the little droid tripped over and its top fell off, startling Jar Jar Binks. They boosted Ocean Om. You saw all bombard. You saw all... Saying that Anthony Hopkins delivered a memorable performance as Hannibal Lecter in the 1991 thriller The Silence of the Lambs would definitely be an understatement. 
Even though his appearance in the movie lasted only 16 minutes in total, the legendary actor played his part so well that it feels like his cannibalistic serial killer dominated pretty much the entire film. The movie ultimately won 5 Oscars, including Best Actor for Hopkins, which was the least amount of screen time ever for a Best Actor recipient. Now even though Hopkins always claimed that he conceived the character of Hannibal rather easily, as he intuitively knew how he looked and how he sounded, playing a sophisticated and intelligent man with a developed taste for people's livers was undeniably a demanding task, which is probably the reason why he had to let off some steam and channel his inner Rocky Balboa during an outtake on the set. This one is for you, Adrian. Now for you, Polly. Let's go for it. Rocky Five. Let's do it now. Guy goes on the f box. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.